That was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Oh, pardon me, please. Forgive my intrusion. Don't, don't stop singing, please. I mean, it's just... I heard singing from afar, and I, I followed it. It it filled me with happiness. Never mind, pardon. I... Right, my name. I'm Erlin. Yes, Erlin. I live here. And I see you've discovered that meadow as well. I don't know how much of a singer you were before you came here, but... I'm sure you probably felt it. A lot easier to sing. A lot less painful, and... No doubt your voice sounded far better than it usually does, which, might I say, that really is saying something bad. <sighs> I must say it again. You have no idea how beautiful that singing was. In all truth, this has been a very... downtroddening week or so. These past few months haven't been the easiest for me, but... When I heard you singing... If it's all right in my saying, it felt like a burden was being lifted from my shoulders. No, I... May I say, it felt like a hundred burdens. It felt as if there was nothing at all wrong in my life. And so I wanted to get closer, and I wanted to see what magnificent being, what celestial, angelic deity could have been singing such a melodious tune. And yet I must say, it uh, wasn't at all what I was expecting. In a good way, mind you. I had never once thought that people could ever be more than just ordinary. But to think that such a mortal being could produce something so evangelical, I'd have to say I'd already died, and that the Eternities and all their celestial singers had embraced me. <laughs> what is your name, O oh, celestial singer? <laughs> ah... Well, it matters not to me, whether it be a plain and simple name, or an eloquent one, I will always remember you. I will always remember it as she who sang until my heart sorrowed no longer. Uh, do you mind while I gather some of that water? I'll be brief, and maybe both of us can be on our way. Thank you. I'm curious, what are you doing out in these parts of the woods? I don't find many humans out here. So I see, wandering, as most of us are. But my question is, were you wandering aimlessly, or were you wandering in search of something? What's the difference? Well, one means that you are wandering, hoping that you'll find something that you don't even know of. The other means that you know what you're looking for, and you're out finding it, but don't know where to seek it out. Okay, either way, fair enough. <sighs> Where am I taking it? Well, if you plan on wandering some more, then you don't need to worry about a thing. Oh, well, that'd be very kind of you. You don't have to help me bring anything. <laughs> so it seems, you both sing and behave as an angel. Here. Can you carry my bag? It's not particularly heavy, it's just cumbersome while I'm carrying this barrel as well. Thank you. I have a sleigh this way by the road. Yes, a sleigh. Don't you start me. Don't you start with the elf and sleigh jokes. <laughs> just... Oh, that laugh of yours. Even that is beautiful. <laughs> For all I know, you could be one of the carolers this barrel is for. Yes. Might as well share, since you've been so kind as to help me out. There's a few villages down the road that I give this water to. It helps lift their spirits, so to say. Well, at least that's what they claim. But I have noticed that any who drink it, as you already discovered, tend to feel both merrier and... Perhaps even happier, would you say? Mayhaps happier? Okay. This time of the year is supposed to be a magical season for all those who observe it. It's also dead set in the winter, when people should be resting. 
The harvests are over. People should be gathered together, keeping themselves warm and happy. So one of the ways I try to help out is by doing any small, charitable means that I can. And one of the ways I do so is by delivering any small, charitable means that I can. Ah, my sleigh's right over here. <sighs> there we are. Thank you for carrying my bag. Most kind of you. Noon seems to be waning into the evening. I would imagine you need to head back to your village, is that correct? In that case, let me offer you a ride, then. Nonsense. You helped me this far. If you can help someone, then surely you can accept help. Isn't that right? <laughs> Climb aboard. No, this sleigh isn't pulled by a troop of reindeer. Just a pair of white stags. Master. Yes, I don't need a crop for either of these two. They know my voice. Now, tell me, where should I take you? Very well. I'll follow the right road there. I'm actually surprised you ask about that. I always want to know why I have a sleigh, so I just say it's snowy. It's the best way to move around. But yes, if I live somewhere in the woods, why do I have a sleigh that I can't bring in there? Well, my home is farther north, with a small clan of my own. And so I leave the sleigh there. Now, over the woods that you were in, I spend a great deal of time there. Many years at a time, often. I have a craft of sort. I use that craft to my ability. The ability to benefit others, and myself. I'm not trying to be cryptic. I'm trying to describe it as best as I can. As no matter how I describe it, it's going to sound strange. Hey, what are you looking back there for? Yes, that is a bookshelf. Yes, those are also toys. And yes, you also saw a rocking chair. And, well, there's... you can't quite see it here, but there's also pieces to assemble a large dining table. It's for this first village. No, I'm not exactly a merchant. In fact, I'm not selling any of this. It's being given to them. <sighs> you know what I said before? About this supposed to be a magical time of the year? I've seen some miraculous events take place. I saw soldiers in a trench who spent weeks, if not months, and months fighting each other. But as the year took its toll, eventually their fire for warfare ran dry. And during this time of the year, they stopped. Soldiers who had fought and killed each other just days before were now shaking hands. Some of them even playing games. In other places, I've seen people spend all that they have, all the time and energy they can muster, into creating something special for somebody who just needed a smile for that day. And... If you must know, I didn't grow up in that village that I mentioned up north. In fact, village you just mentioned actually holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> you ask a lot of questions, but it's refreshing. I actually grew up in that village. Apparently I was found on a doorstep of the chapel. They didn't know who I was, they didn't know my name. But apparently they named me Erlin, because it is an elfish word that means hope, or hopeful. The bishop said that I was a miracle, because I sat outside all night in a basket. Whoever dropped me off there didn't know, probably. But I spent an entire winter's night outside by myself. By the time the sister found me in the morning, she said that I was still alive, still awake, and still crying. And so I grew up in that village, an elf among humans. I learned to work timber, I learned to carve, to craft, and more importantly, I learned to give, and give back. So yes, that place holds a dear, dear place in my heart. For taking in something that truly wasn't theirs. Huh, you're right. It is just like what I said earlier. If you're able to give help, 
then perhaps you should also be able to accept it. You know, interestingly enough, I've never actually told someone this story. Granted, I'm certain a few people know in that village, but... Well, yes, I doubt you saw me in that village. That was decades ago. Bear in mind, I'm an elf. I may appear as if I'm still in my early twenties, but I'm almost a hundred years old now. Well, oh, eighty-nine. I don't shame my age now. I'm still as youthful as I ever was. <laughs> but I thank thee for hearing this. I've never once told this tale to anyone. And from the looks of it, there are fewer and few people who recognize me in that village every year. So it would be nice seeing another friendly face that I know. Yes, the bookshelf is for the librarian there. Large tables for the mess hall. Toys for the youngins. The rocking chairs for a dear friend of mine. A childhood friend. He's gotten older now and his spirit still hasn't changed. Can't seem to sit still in a regular chair, so I figured this might be a better alternative for him. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> right. And he used to be the one who gave me a list of different things that the village needed. That shelf had been waiting for a long time, I must say. But knowledge among my people is very important. Especially scripts, books, scrolls, you name it. So I wanted to put a great deal of effort into that shelf, make sure it's nice and eloquent, just what they needed. I didn't want it to just be functional, I wanted it to be beautiful. And so yes, that is what I'm doing. Visiting an old home and giving back after they've given me so much. But now I'm starting to realize, once those people I've known for so long are gone, will it still be called home for me? That's very kind of you to say. But I don't want to be a burden by tasking you with visiting me each, every now and then. <laughs> I don't find you a burden either. <laughs> you would do that. You'd invite me into your home. Well, I haven't been in the home of a stranger for a long time. Right. Oh, well, certainly we are not strangers anymore. Very well. It would be an honor to me to visit you in your home. 